This is the plaintiff, Natasha Mello. She says she stored some belongings in the basement of the two-family home her mom rented, and her things were ruined by a rainstorm. The defendant, who also lives in the house, is the only one with access to the windows in the basement where her things were stored. He obviously left them open. Her things are wet and ruined, and she wants to be compensated for them. So she's suing for $2,500 for her damaged belongings. This is the defendant, Alfred Pelletier. He says the plaintiff isn't even technically his tenant. Her mother is. Besides, his basement doesn't flood or have a water problem. And this is simply a case of someone trying to take advantage of a landlord. Bottom line, nothing of the plaintiff's was ruined. He has no lease with her and therefore owes this woman nada. He's accused of causing a tenant to be wet and bothered. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket. The plaintiff stored stuff in the house her mom rented and the stuff got ruined in a rainstorm. She says the landlord is responsible, but the defendant says it's all a scam. It's the case of raindrops keep falling on my wallet. Thank you, Douglas. You Natasha Mello? Yes. You are suing Alfred Pelletier, your landlord? He's my mom's landlord. Oh, he's not even your landlord? Correct. Okay. For $2,500, in damages that you say you sustained when you stored your stuff in his basement. Yes, correct. Um, last March of 2015, I actually moved in with my mom. She's his tenant, um, okay. but I was just staying with her. Um, For how long? Until I was able to find another apartment. Which turned out to be how long? Um, at this point, I'm still with her. Oh, well, then you moved in. Yeah. Was that approved by you? No. When did you learn about it? When she was three quarters of the way moving in. I saw her moving in. Her mother sent me a um, fast text to let me know that her daughter was moving in. Okay. And all I re replied to that was, yes, I noticed. At the time that you noticed that she was moving in right. without your authority, you didn't say, no, that has to stop. I'm not approving this. Right. No, nothing like that. But you just went yeah. ahead and let okay. her move in. The reason why I didn't say anything. I don't need to know a reason why. Am I accurate? Yes. Okay. All right. So that makes you a tenant of his. Okay, which is better for you because you got a lot of nerve coming here and suing him for something that he didn't protect when you're not a tenant. Okay, go ahead. So um, I was staying with my mom. I had put my belongings um, aside from my bed and my clothes that I was wearing at the time. Um, the rest of my belongings were downstairs in the basement. Um, and is this all of your belongings that were in the basement? This is um, a majority of them, yes. Okay. I'm sorry, I can't see in front of the... Well, you know what you brought to yeah, court. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, when I placed them down there, everything was perfectly fine. Um, like he stated, my mom did send him a text message to let him yeah, know okay. that I was there. Yeah, okay. What happened to your there. stuff? Do you have pictures of the basement? Yep. Let me see what it looks like. And so you left your stuff down there, and what happened? Um, I'm not exactly sure when it happened, but at some point, um, the defendant opened the windows downstairs. How do you know he opened the windows? Um, because he's the only one that has... Did um, you see the windows open? Yes. Yep. When did you see the windows open? Um, sometime in July. Did you uh, take a picture of what you saw? Of the windows open? No. Uh -huh. But at that time, I told my mom and I asked. Because the pictures her... that you do have, the windows are closed, right? Yes, yes, because mm -hmm. this is after the fact. You go down there in July and see windows open, but nothing is damaged. Correct. Then you go down there again when and see things damaged? December 26th. So the first time that when I When you noticed... saw the windows open and your stuff wasn't damaged, why didn't you move your stuff out of there since the windows were open? Well, at that point, it, nothing was damaged. So it I didn't had occur my to you mom... that open windows might, might bring rain in? Possibly, yeah. Okay. What is this a picture of? That one is right, um, the open space is where all of my stuff was. And right above it, you can see the two small windows. All right. And then what am I seeing hanging here? Insulation? Yes. Yes, ma'am. So go on, you go down on December 26th, and what happens? Yes, um, so once I noticed that my items were damaged... Um, How is your stuff damaged? Um, everything is covered in mold. Um, and you're suing the landlord because you put stuff in a basement and are stunned that it's covered in mold? Correct, but the only How, what reason did he do that... Wrong? He, he's the one that has access so and what? permission what did he to do open wrong? the window. Do your does your mother know you're suing? Yeah, absolutely. And is a mother under a lease? No, um... So he could say tomorrow, tenant, everybody get out, 30 days she notice. She is under no, it's a lease. Tenant, tenant at will lease. Yeah, 30 days. 30 days. So he could yeah. just tomorrow, because he doesn't like getting sued, he could just file it and your mother has to move. Your mother know that? Yeah. 
Oh, interesting. I don't know if I got sued that, and someone was entitled only to 30 days, they'd be getting their 30 days. I don't want to live on top of someone who sues me. Wow. Okay. So you are suing for $300 for a Revo suitcase. Which one's a Revo? It's um, the blue ones. It's a three-piece set. There's a second one in here, and then there's a smaller one. Okay. $1,500 for a Yamaha Alto saxophone. That's What's wrong the with the saxophone? Um, it's comprised of a bunch of pads and keys. All the pads Let's see inside it. of it, it are moldy. This is the part that my mouth actually goes on. If you look inside of here, it's all covered in mold. Well, well, instead um, of him having to buy you a new Yamaha saxophone, why don't you just have it cleaned? It absolutely could be cleaned as well. Well, then but why the, is it that you're asking him to pay you $1,500 for it? Well, I feel that was the value of getting it cleaned. $1,500 to, to get, get it cleaned? You, you feel have to that? Get, you have to get okay, do you have? Do you have an estimate for cleaning it that no. says it's $1,500? No, I don't. Okay. So go on. It was just my best judgment. Really? Um, that's your best judgment? Well, a brand new saxophone is $2,500. How about just you go somewhere and find out what it costs to clean? Yeah, that's Wouldn't that be a better idea? Do. Yeah. Rather than just making up a figure of $1,500 for cleaning? Yeah, I just use my best judgment, like I said. But inside all the pads, um, it, it's all they're all covered in mold. Yeah, I can see the green mold. Yeah. OK, and then what's wrong with the luggage? Um, those are also covered in mold. Did you try to clean the luggage? Um, I did, yeah, at certain, um, in certain places I did. Um, and what happened when you tried to clean them? It, it didn't really come off. Um, this especially is what I tried to clean first, but you can see the part that my actual face goes on is covered in mold. That's not going to come off. Okay. But I did definitely attempt to clean the things. As well, my photo album, things like that can't you be cleaned. You put your photo albums in the basement? Yeah. The why? Whole th um, just because it, it's not something that I look at every yeah, day. Yeah, I know, but why so, would you put photo albums in a dank basement? Because I had moved in with my mom. No, I didn't I, have enough space. No, you're not hearing me. It's a bad idea to put a precious thing in a basement where, do you understand what a basement is? Yeah. Basements are moldy. What's a sentimental foot cast? So, is she responsible for her own bad luck because she didn't shut the windows or tell the landlord? No. Why? Well, because those are his windows, and just because you let me store it doesn't mean I need to touch anything. But if you, it's like if you see a train coming at you, maybe it shouldn't be coming at you, but you walk out it's of the way, don't you? that specific. You can't be sure what kind of storm is coming until it arrives. Are you for who, real? Who says he doesn't know the windows are open? Why do I think he doesn't know? Well, he... Uh, are, are, you just, are you arguing this? Are you serious? I'm so serious. Oh, my God. Okay, going inside the courtroom. You're suing for $530 for a sentimental foot cast. To what clarify, that? that was the balance that was left after this, so they took the dollar amount and put it to that. Wait, I don't um, know what you mean. It's not $530 for this foot cast. Well, then, well that, you can't get the $2,500 unless you say, I want to get to $2,500. Let me sue for $530, and I'll get to that balance. But anyway, what is a sentimental foot cast? Well, when I was younger, um, when I was born, actually, my feet were had to be broken because they went the opposite way. And this was a cast that I wore when I was younger you, on my feet. Oh, that's a sentimental and the foot whole, cast. Yeah, and the whole inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> the whole inside of it as well is covered in mold. And All right, so now, did you ever open windows in the summer to get air circulating um, there? Yes, I do. It's an old house um, built in 1850-something. So to protect the, the support beams and everything else, they get air in there, post pod beetle, stuff like that. But this is something that doesn't belong to me in a certain area, that window <coughs> close to that, I leave alone. But there's another one close by that I open. Okay. There's a wall that Did she ever come up to you well? and tell you, uh, hey, you ruined my stuff, you owe me money? She did that after she went uh, after her mother and the man that uh, lives with me. She talked to them first before she talked to me. And, and then what happened? And after um, she had told me what I ha supposedly had ruined. Okay. Um, but, plus, so d tell me your defense. Well, I, I don't have no counterclaim or anything like that, but I feel like I didn't uh, do anything wrong. Okay. But well, and you tell me, what do you think he did do wrong? Um, when I first noticed that things were damaged, I didn't have his phone number. My mom did because she's, of course, his tenant. So I immediately had her text him, but he was at work. Um, he, that's when he replied with, unfortunately, he wasn't going to be able to do anything. 
So at that time, because he was at work, um, his roommate who lives there as well was outside. And I told him, you know, you can let him know that if he wants to deal with this like adults, I can absolutely show him my belongings <laughs> and we can try and figure it out. Um, okay, I'm gonna tell you how adults deal with this. Are you ready? Number one, you describe yourself as not a tenant, but a guest. A guest doesn't have rights to have a landlord protect their property in the way that you are describing, that's one. Two, I don't think you're a, a guest, I think you're a tenant. Because if you're living there and he acknowledges that you're living there, doesn't say you need to get out, then he's kind of accepted you as a tenant. So I'm gonna give you the rights of a tenant. Three, if something's really important and sentimental to you, don't store it in a wet, dank be basement. Because basements are known for being able to get wet and dank and, and, and get moldy. This is a crazy place to store sentimental value stuff like a photo album or your, your foot cast. Besides, that was gonna be reused at any point? No, no. but it was All just right. the fact so that I'd like to here, keep it. Four, was I on four? to be thrown away. Clean the stuff, because there's some stuff that can be cleaned and you can get the mold off. Five, your used old luggage is not worth the amounts that you're, that you're at. You can't just make up figures when you come to court. And six, the guy did nothing wrong. This is a basement. There's a window right by where you put your stuff. Assuming he opened that window, which he denies and you are not bringing me proof of, assuming that the windows right by your stuff was open, which I don't believe, okay? But assuming that they were, then don't put your stuff in his basement next to windows that you know are open. Because according to you, I witnessed them open in the summer. Okay, well, if you witness them open in the summer, then you better not be storing your stuff down there. It's just that simple. Verdict for the defendant. Thank you. So the plaintiff has just found out the hard way that it's not the defendant's fault what happened to your stuff. What's, uh, what's going through your mind here? Well, I feel I really didn't get a, a chance to express myself and the full story, um, but I mean. What, what, what did we miss that would have turned this thing around? Well, a better explanation as to um, how I came across finding out that he was in fact the one that opened the windows and um, that the negligence was on him for damaging my property, mm -hmm. but I guess you didn't see it that way. No, maybe you shouldn't have stored it in a dank basement, number one, and number two, near a window that uh, where there's a danger. That was, that was only the storage, um, the only storage place that I could have put my belongings, so there wasn't really another option um, rather than taking everything that I own and putting it in You can't blame that on room. somebody else. Well, well, the fact that the basement is the only area of storage in a home. All right, okay. Yeah. All right, so step on in here. What, what are you doing doing all? What did you do wrong? Nada. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been a good Joe, taking everything, and I know she moved in without my consent, but while she's there, I know the judge said that she considers her a tenant. Right. But yeah, on the other hand, the reason why I sat with it is because once they're in, going through the system trying to get them out. Mm -hmm. So that's why I sat with it. All right. You I'm regret? Not, you regret uh, anything? No, I'm just glad it's over. Okay, Harvey. Okay, sorry about this, but you have a duty to protect your own stuff. Even if the other person is negligent, if you can avoid your stuff getting ruined, you have a duty to protect it. And that will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case of the way into the courtroom right now.